What do coral reefs, climate change, and physical fitness have in common? Those three things may seem very different, but each of them, in some way, are controlled by human beings. I know this because I'm a marine biologist and a historical ecologist. It's my job to tell the story of ecosystems through time. And in 2016, I moved from the United States to Hong Kong, a city best known for its financial portfolio, so that I could study its marine portfolio. And my current research is on corals. Now, corals are wonderful animals that grow and build coral reefs, the most biodiverse marine habitat on Earth. More than 25% of all marine life relies on them. I try to identify their past greatest threats so that we can give them the best chance for survival. And especially in Hong Kong, corals have had to adapt to the growing human footprint on this earth. Unfortunately, my research reaffirms a global trend. Corals are sick. Surveys and research claim anywhere from 20 to 30 percent of all shallow water corals have died in the last 30 years due to human impacts, with the greatest global impact known to be rising temperatures from climate change. How do we get here? Why haven't we done more to stop this? We have failed to combat climate change because our mentality around climate change is wrong. You see, in the 60s and 70s, science was already fairly conclusive on this whole climate thing. And governments were taking big steps to combat our greenhouse gas emissions. But then the climate issue became political, facts got mixed with sensationalism, and the dialogue changed from we need to do something to it's too late, we can't possibly curb emissions in time. We told ourselves that we were the problem, not also the solution, and we mentally shut down and pushed those issues to the side. Awful. And statistically speaking, we are part of the problem. The 10% most affluent people on Earth create over 50% of greenhouse gas emissions. Emissions that are causing sea levels and temperatures to rise at an exponential rate. We have given the oceans a fever, and because of this, much of the plant and animal life there are dying. All right, so we've talked about coral, and we've covered climate change, but what does physical fitness have to do with this? <laughs> well, I'm not just a marine biologist, but I'm also a lifelong competitive athlete and a coach. And I wanna show you how my competitive athletics not my scientific background is what has shaped my mentality and drove me to be the conservationist that I am today. And how I think that if we are all a bit more athletically minded, then we'll all be much more climate conscious. Now, my athletic mentality was birthed being the youngest in a big family. You get that way when it's you versus your older siblings, and it's always the youngest picks last at holiday dinners. No wonder I wanted to be more athletic. But one of the first things I learned as an athlete was that most of our barriers are not actually physical, they're mental. And it's the same with climate change. So that's why I'm gonna work with you right here and now in your first climate personal training session on how we're gonna start winning against the climate crisis. And just like I would do with my physical fitness clients, first, we're gonna reshape your mentality. Second, we're gonna reform your climate identity. Third, we're gonna show you how to initiate and take action. And then fourth, we're gonna teach you how to care. Because together, with those steps, is how we're going to build your climate fitness. Huh? All right, let's get going. First step on our fitness journey is with mentality. And I learned that fitness buffs have a much better mental strategy for dealing with problems than scientists. How many of you have ever had a fitness milestone or set a health target or played on a sports team? Anyone? Yeah. Then you will understand what I mean when I say we become goal-oriented but task-focused. 
We use long-term goals to help us to complete difficult everyday tasks. Do you want to climb that mountain? First, you start by taking steps. Do you want to win the game? First, you go to practices. Listen, I don't win every weightlifting competition I do. And my ultimate goal of competing in the Olympics will probably never be achieved. But it's important that I look back at those days of dedicated training and I realize I am a better, stronger person than I was and I want to keep improving. That is the definition of the athlete mentality. Our desire to keep working. You know what that doesn't sound anything like? The normal conversation around climate change. Everything about the climate crisis is framed as a failure. Curbing greenhouse gas emissions, sustainable food production, protecting all the reefs. Every time we talk about climate change, we tell ourselves we are failing. Now, I'm not saying that this is inaccurate, but what if instead of looking at the Global Climate Olympics as unwinnable, we focus on our personal everyday wins? Today, I recycled everything properly. Today, I did not eat meat. Today, I took public transit every time I went outside. Now, are these earth-shattering goals that are gonna solve the climate crisis? <laughs> no, but they're a start and they will lead to something bigger. Remember, you cannot climb that mountain until you start. Big goals are built by small wins. When we start to think like that, when we start to build that climate athlete mentality, then we will really set ourselves up for climate wins in the future. And once we've built that mentality, then we can reform our identity, how we see ourselves. And when I first started training, I saw myself as a scrawny nerd, because I was. But then through years of dedicated training and hard work, I got stronger and built myself into what I see today, an athletic nerd. But along the way, some people saw that and wanted a similar change for themselves. So I would spend days writing them a tailored fitness program in hopes that I would change their lives. And many of them would inevitably start it, get bored and tired, and quit. We've all been there, right? I needed a way to ensure their dedication. I needed to help them succeed. So the secret? I created a highly scientific test. If you wanted to train with me, you had to do 50 burpees a day, every day, for 30 days straight. And if you completed that task, I'd coach you. Now, who knows anything about burpees? They're pretty awful, right? Yeah. But most people can do them. And this test worked for that one simple reason. Because really, it wasn't about the burpees. They were just a decoy. But because most people can do them, but they were easy enough to get through. And it, that was how it worked. Because after 30 days of this task, people started to feel different. And after 30 days of this challenge, people started to identify as someone who could do the fitness thing. Now, listen, I can't make you do burpees for climate change as much as I really want to. But here is your 30-day very achievable task. Every day for the next 30 days, do one thing that actively improves your climate fitness. Maybe it's actually using that reusable water bottle and cutlery. Maybe it's cutting meat out of just one meal a day. Maybe it's always taking public transit when you need to get somewhere. Anything, do it, I don't care. And you know what? Just like those burpees, I know they're gonna be tough at the beginning. But every day you do it, see yourself doing it. Build a routine. And through time, you will start to identify as someone who can do the climate fitness thing. And for the record, I am not perfect. I still struggle every day with both my climate and my personal fitness. My biggest weaknesses are I eat too much meat and I have really poor ankle flexibility. But I recognize this and I am also working at this every day to try and better myself. Because even I can use a reminder of, hey, I do the climate fitness thing. All right, session recap. We've talked about your mentality and your identity. Now. It's time to initiate action. It's time to use these hands. 
And I believe we are the best athletes at the sports we enjoy. And it's the same for our climate fitness. So after your 30-day challenge, you're going to start to identify as a climate athlete. I want you to take that feeling and harness it and then use it to build a community around you. And with that community, continue to do climate actions in a way you enjoy. Do you like the beach? Organize a beach cleanup. Do you like to cook? Cook using local and sustainable foods. Are you crafty? Make stuff you need out of recyclable and reusable materials. But building a community around you is important because a community is like a gym membership or a running club. First, it's a group of people that holds you accountable and expects you to be there. But second, it's a group of people that surrounds you and that you are growing with and learning from and can support. In those daily tasks that were small individually, then become impactful community-wide. All right, now we're at the tough part of our fitness journey. Because now I need to convince you to continue on your own. I need to get you to trust and care about your climate fitness. Why? Because there comes a point in almost all athletes' careers where they no longer have regular coaching when they need to find the personal motivation to continue to change on their own. This is the part of that fitness talk where I say, you have to trust the process that I just laid out for you. And I know, I can see some people rolling their eyes, but it's true, and athletes will understand this. Because in order to achieve their goals, athletes are more willing to trust and follow expert advice. Most athletes are not highly scientific. They did not need to understand all the peer-reviewed literature before they were ready to make a change in their lives. I have never had a client come up to me and say, I just read a fascinating paper on type 1 versus type 2A and type 2X muscle fibers, and I want to incorporate that into my training. <laughs> no. Most of my clients have simpler goals. I want to lose weight, or I want to get stronger. Why is it that simple? because they understand what they want and they trust a process to get them there. So why can't we do this for our climate fitness? What's ironic is most of us know more about climate science than we do about exercise science. We've known for decades what greenhouse gas emissions are doing to our planet. Emissions that get trapped in our atmosphere and create an earth blanket that is heating the earth at temperatures too fast for things to adapt. Emissions that are human-driven, meaning it's both our fault and up to us to fix it. So why is this climate information so difficult to turn into climate action? Well, Jane Goodall once said, only if we understand will we care. And only if we care will we help. And there's the gap. We understand about our personal fitness. If I lose weight, I will fit into my favorite pair of pants again. It's personal, of course we care. But we don't understand what our climate fitness can achieve. What's personal about climate change? What if I told you that your climate fitness saves lives? In a 2019 study, a team found that on average, one future premature climate-related death will occur for every 1,000 tons of carbon burned. That's about the annual emissions of just the electricity of just one of Hong Kong's 42,000 buildings. And what's more is this is likely to affect people that are living in developing or high-risk countries, not those living in buildings like this. That's one billion climate-related deaths in the next one to 200 years. That averages to 10 deaths, two to three families a minute. And that's just human deaths. We still don't have a great understanding of the indirect impacts to global biodiversity. But judging from my corals, it doesn't look good. I cannot think of a more personal reason to care. Our climate fitness saves lives. And who wouldn't want to identify as someone who saves lives? And just like those burpees you did, 
The process to get here wasn't really that tough, was it? And that is exactly the point. The road to your climate fitness is not actually that steep. Remember, first, all we have to do is reshape our mentality. Next, we just reform our identity. And then third, we'll learn to take and initiate action. Because after those three steps, we will understand about our climate fitness and we will care. Because yes, the Global Climate Olympics is a mountain. But your personal journey is about finding the mentality to be willing to climb it. It just takes one step at a time. But we can do it, team. We just have to start. Thank you.